Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Profile Podcast. Franklin Graham has been all over the news headlines in recent days. The son of Billy Graham is planning on speaking at a number of different events across the UK. However, one by one, every single venue has now cancelled his appearance. Franklin Graham's team say they are planning on rebooking other venues. But one of the major issues has been Franklin Graham's statements in the past on a host of contentious issues not limited to Islam and the LGBT community. It seems his statements have put off many secular venues from allowing him to speak on their platforms. Well, Franklin Graham has just visited the UK and he's been speaking to a number of different media outlets. He came into our studios here at Premier Christian Radio and he met my colleague, Head of News, Marcus Jones. What you're about to hear is their conversation where Marcus Jones quizzed the evangelist on all sorts of different issues related to his upcoming tour. So without any further ado, let's listen into their conversation. Welcome to the UK. I'd say welcome, but I'm going to guess that you've had better welcomes to places that you visited um, than the one you've had this time around over what's been happening over the last few weeks. Well, uh, first of all, always feel welcome in the UK and and always look forward to coming uh, to this country uh, and to be with the people of this country. And so uh, we're excited. We're coming back in late uh, May. for the, the tour, the Graham tour, starting up in Scotland and going in and up and down in Cardiff. And uh, so we are looking forward to going from the north to the south, east and west, to tell men and women how they can have a relationship with God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's, that's what this tour is all about. And uh, we're coming. Uh, some people think we may have canceled. We're not canceling anything. We're coming. And we're looking forward to, to being with the uh, the, the 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 church and working beside the church. There's a sense of deja vu in that we were in this room two years ago before your mission to Blackpool in uh, 2018. Yes. At the time, we were talking about opposition and those right. who were campaigning for you to be banned from preaching. Right. But is there a sense that the opposition has stepped up this time around? No, no question. I think they have stepped up, and uh, they, they certainly have the the right to do that. But uh, I think there's a, a, a real uh, misunderstanding. Uh, we're, we're not here to preach against anyone, uh, but we're here to tell everyone how they can have their sins forgiven and how they can have a relationship with God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Uh, There there are not many paths to God. Uh, There's only one, and that goes through the cross. Uh, Jesus Christ paid for the debt of our sins when he shed his blood in our place. And when he hung on the cross, God poured upon his son all the sins past, present, future. That's us here today. And if we're willing to accept by faith and to believe on his name and turn from our sins, and that's called repentance, to repent and to receive Christ by faith, God will forgive our sins. And the Bible says it's by grace that we're saved through faith. It's not of works. We, we don't work for our salvation. It's, uh, it's through faith. And uh, so that's the message we preach. Uh, we don't preach against any person or any sin. We, we preach against all sins. So listening to you now, there'll be people saying, what's, what's, what's the problem here? Um, there's, there's nothing uh, offensive there. We'll come to the misunderstandings uh, later. But why do you think that the opposition has geared up this time around? Well, uh, I'm not quite sure because I haven't changed uh, the message. And I just, uh, it's, you know, it's, I think sometimes people hear one thing and they, they kind of stick to that one thing. They don't hear the rest of what you say. Um, repentance. Uh, we have to turn from our sin. And that's a very important, that's part of what the Bible teaches, uh, that we have to repent. And so some people want to say, I love God or I love Jesus, but they want to continue living in sin. And the Bible requires turning from the sin. And that's something that I have to do, you, everyone's listening. Uh, We're all sinners, the Bible says. We've all come short of God's standard. The Bible makes it very clear that the penalty of sin is death, uh, spiritual, eternal separation from God for eternity. And God is willing to, to forgive sin, but you have to come to him one way, and that's through his son, Jesus Christ. 
I've seen um, a number of ways of how different media groups have described you over the past few weeks. Some have been hate preacher, some have been homophobe, some have been bigot. Those sorts of accusations, that you must feel that on a personal level. It's, it's Franklin Graham, your name, that's being linked to these, name, these names. Well, uh, the opposition is very good at um, calling people names. Um, you see, I believe the Bible teaches that marriage is between a man and a woman. And that's what the Church of England, that's what the, that's their position. I think Her Majesty the Queen, that's her position. Uh, and it's the position of the church uh, pretty much uh, worldwide. Uh, this is what the Bible teaches. And that's what I believe, and that uh, marriage is for a man and woman. Now, I know that in a few Western countries uh, that um, marriage between same-sex couples has been legalized in the last few years. But this is something very new, and it's just in a few countries. And it's the law, and I'm not here to, to, uh, to chastise anybody. I'm here just to let them know what the Bible says, and that we can be forgiven, and we can have a new life and a new beginning. I think people today, not much different than they were 20 years, 50 years, 100 years ago, I think people are searching. And they're searching for meaning to their life. I think people are wanting to know, uh, is there a God? Does he love me or does he know my name? Does he even care? Uh, and I want people to know, yes, God does love us. He, he, he knows our name. And he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to talk to us. Uh, he wants us to talk to him. But sin is a barrier that blocks that relationship. And that, that sin barrier can be removed. Uh, and that's through Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm here uh, in this country, uh, starting up in Glasgow uh, the end of May uh, and through the uh, first half of June as we go from city to city. This is my message, how a person can have a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. Again, we're not preaching against uh, homosexual people. We're not preaching against uh, Muslim people. Matter of fact, we invite homosexual people to come. I want them to come. Uh, we want Muslims to come. We want Hindus to come. We want all people to come. And our message is for everybody, and it's not against anybody. We've asked our audience to um, participate in this conversation. They've given us a, a few questions. So throughout um, our conversation, I'll drop some of those in. And uh, you mentioned the Church of England, and that leads us on to our first um, audience question. Because one of the things that's really been interesting um, over the last few weeks is what I would describe as friendly fire. Those within the church who've been part of the campaign mm -hmm. uh, against you, the Evangelical Alliance here in the UK and the Archbishop of Canterbury have refused to publicly support your tour. There have been some bishops in the Church of England who've actually called on the venues to cancel your booking. Um, so Adebayo um, from Greenwich has said, what do you think about the Church of England bishops who've campaigned against you? Well, first, um, uh, my, we, we've never had 100% of the churches uh, behind uh, our campaigns. There, there's just some people who don't believe in evangelism, and they, they think this type of evangelism is out of date. Um, it's not. Uh, my father, when he first came uh, to this country in the late 40s, uh, there was a petition to keep him from coming. Uh, most of the churches were against this uh, American uh, coming over here with his uh, brand of evangelism. Uh, there were numerous churches that didn't support him. And I understand that, and that's, that's certainly fine. But we, we welcome those churches uh, to join us and be a part of it because we're coming uh, to, to tell people of this great island, coming to the U.K., to tell them how they can have a relationship with God. And if someone gets saved, I don't take that person back to America with me. They stay here. And we want them to go into the churches, and we want them to be discipled. We want them to grow. Uh, so we hope that this tour will benefit the churches here in the UK. But there are, like you say, that you, you talk about a number of churches who are protesting, but these are bishops bishops who are overseeing hundreds of churches and they're telling their flock don't get involved with this man that 
must be difficult to hear. Well, uh, and that, that's, that's certainly their right to do that. Um, but at the same time, by telling people not to come, uh, sometimes that encourages people to come, and I hope that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you mentioned there that uh, some churches or some Christians don't believe in evangelism. Mm -hmm. When we look at the uh, church in the UK, um, do you see that? Do you see that, uh, that we have a church that's giving up on evangelism? Well, I think there, there's a, a number of churches that, that feel that um, the proclamation of evangelism, like what we do, uh, like my father does or did, uh, is uh, old school, old fashioned, and, and it doesn't work in today's uh, you know culture. And I'm here to say it it does work if it's done correctly, if it's done right, and that's by prayer, getting uh, churches to pray and to pray for the unlost in their communities. Um, God will use this. Uh, Peter stood up on Pentecost and preached, and three thousand were added to the church in one day. Uh, Paul stood on Mars Hill in Athens and preached. Uh, people were saved. And so God uses all forms of evangelism, and they're different forms. And I know that this year, I think there's about 20 different groups uh, here in the UK that have a burden uh, for uh, reaching the UK and, and have various evangelistic programs. And uh, ours is just one of uh, 20, and we're, we're all... Um, working to do the same thing, each one using their gifts the way that God has given them. And so we're just part of a, a mosaic here of other Christian organizations uh, that are that God has burdened in there. God has kind of put a burden on my heart to come to the UK this year. And when he kind of gave me that burden and we began to look at uh, what we could do, began to see there were others that had the same burden. And we just feel that this is a, a movement of the Holy Spirit of God and we're just part of what God is doing. Let's talk about the main issue then that's been causing the concern over the last few weeks, uh, that's been causing the division. Um, Gary from Sidcup asks, why are you so against gay people? I'm, I'm not against gay people, and that's that's one of the, the things that's just uh, not true. I'm, I'm for all people, and I, and I care about gay people. But I also want gay people to know the truth and how God sees them. And uh, God made us, and he created us. But again... Um, marriage is between a man and a woman and that's where God is very clear and I just I care enough about gay people just to tell them the truth uh, I'm not going to lie to them uh, I want them to know that uh, that homosexuality that God sees it as sin adultery is sin stealing is sin uh, pride is a sin and all of us have to repent and turn from our sins and by faith believe on the name of Jesus Christ but uh, I don't hate the guy that's the liars. I don't hate the guys that, uh, or the women that are men or who are adulterers. I don't hate them, but I want them to know that they can be saved, they can be forgiven, they can have a, a new life, a new beginning. But no, I, I do not hate. Uh, gay I want to read a couple of quotes that have um, been used in the media here over the last few weeks, and um, that have been attributed to what you've said in the past. Homosexuality isn't something to be flaunted. God brought death to Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality. The flames of hell await gay people. Gay people are led by the enemy. Now, there are many Christians who would support your theology, support where you're coming from on this issue, but would say that that sort of language is actually harmful. It's making people feel like second-class citizens. It's closing people off to the gospel. Could it be that you're causing more harm than good? Well, I think some of those quotes may be attributed maybe to somebody else, uh, and they have uh, said that I said them. Uh, I, I did talk about uh, Pete Buttigieg, who is uh, mayor of, I think, Gary, Indiana, who's running for president, and he was uh, uh, putting forth his, his gay uh, lifestyle and his marriage. And, and I did say that, I said that's not something he should flaunt, uh, that's something he should repent of. And it's, we, 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 we should not flaunt our sins. Uh, we, we should uh, be embarrassed by our sins and ask God for forgiveness. And so uh, Mayor Pete Buttigieg, is, that's, that was a comment that I made to him. And so I would encourage everyone who, if you're in a gay, life, a gay relationship, uh, I'm not your enemy. I'm certainly not here to preach against you. And, and don't even mention homosexuality. Uh, when I preach, I talk about all sins and that Jesus Christ is willing to, to save us from 
all sins. And I, frankly, I was with you in, in Blackpool, and, and not once did I hear uh, any uh, mention about homosexuality from the pulpits. But I guess this is the thing that people are struggling with. is It's the um, comments made in media interviews, it's so social media com comments, not just about this uh, one issue, which they see as completely separate to the preaching. And they, say, and they say, we don't have an issue with the preaching, but it's these comments which are continuously being brought up in the media, which and, is and causing- And some of those comments are just not true. You know, they're, they're, some of them are taken out of uh, context, and they, they purposely do this to try to, uh, to make it sound much worse than it is. Uh, again, uh, I believe the Bible to be God's word. Uh, that's, um, this is my faith. This is- and so when the Bible says that uh, all liars are going to go to hell, uh, that's, that's true. I believe that. And Franklin Graham is a liar. And the matter of fact, the Bible says all men are liars. We're all guilty, aren't we? There's none of us that has been able to live life sinless. And that's why God sent his son from heaven to this earth, uh, to take our sins. And Jesus Christ came on a rescue mission to save the human race. And so you may be gay, you may be an adulterer, you may be a murderer, you may be whatever you are. Jesus Christ came to save. He didn't come to condemn you. He came to save you. And if we're willing to put our faith and trust in him, we will be saved. And, that's, and, it's, and, it's, and it's by God's grace through faith, we don't, we don't have to work for it. We don't have to buy our salvation. Uh, it's simply by God's grace and it's by faith. Simply believing, just believing, God will forgive our sins and heal our hearts. So for a gay person who's listening to us or watching us now, and they're feeling hurt, they've read comments, and they are feeling personally attacked because of their lifestyle, their personal choices, what's your message to them? Well, that first of all, God loves you, and he's willing to forgive sin. Uh, and he forgave me. I was 22 years old when I got on my knees one night and just asked God to forgive me of my sins. And that night, God forgave me. I don't deserve it. I'm a sinner. I deserve God's punishment. I deserve death because I'm a sinner. And so you may be gay, you may be straight, whoever you are, uh, God will forgive you of your sin, and he'll heal your heart. But you've got to come to him through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Because, see, Jesus is the only one to take your sins. There's no other person in history claims to take your sin. Only one, and that's Jesus Christ. There might be somebody listening who is struggling to hear what you're saying because of the hurt that they've experienced. Would you apologize to them? Would you go as far as saying to, uh, sorry for hurt that they might have experienced? Well, first of all, I don't know what they've heard or what they've <laughs> experienced. And I'm not sure I, I said it, but I would certainly apologize to anyone who feels that I am uh, against them or hates them. Uh, and people who use these words like homophobic or... Uh, Islamophobic, and I, I'm not sure what those terms even are. But I would certainly apologize if there was someone who's afraid uh, or hurt because of something that uh, they think I have said. And right now they're listening to what I'm saying. And I'm here to say that God loves you. God is willing to forgive sin. If we will repent and believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, we will be forgiven. And uh, not only will we be forgiven, but our sins will be be removed. And this is the incredible thing. Uh, God is able to remove our sins as far as is the Bible says from the east to the west and uh, give us a new beginning, a new start, a new stamp. And that's, I think people have, I've had people say to me, I wish I could start over again. I wish I could, you know, they think of the choices they've made in life, the bad choices. You can start over again. You can have a new beginning. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ. Let's talk about the cancellations then. Um, eight venues booked, eight venues canceled. Have you experienced anything like this before? No, nothing like this before. Does that concern you? Um, no. Uh, there are other venues. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a, a little bit of a headache. It's, it's difficult here at the last minute uh, to have to after so much work and time has been put into this and so much prayer and, and so many churches uh, already engaged, hundreds and hundreds of churches that are, are part of this. And, and now we have to go back and uh, uh, search for new venues. Uh, and it's a little bit uh, If I'm the owner of a venue, 
wherever it be in the country, seeing the negative publicity, it's going to take a bold move for somebody to want to associate itself with all this negative publicity, rightly or wrongly. I don't know. Um, we've certainly talked to other venues, and uh, and many of them have indicated that would be an issue with them. Some of the venues that you're booking kind of big venues. So are you hoping to get something similar? Because I've heard some people say, well, Franklin Graham's going to have to go and preach in some smaller churches instead. But that's never been your style in the past. You've always wanted to, to draw a big crowd to get your message out to as many people as possible. Is that something that you're stri striving for with this? Sure, so absolutely. And I think uh, some of the venues that uh, we will uh, probably book will be actually larger venues uh, than we had previously. If it meant that these sorts of cancellations wouldn't happen, would you consider not making public comments about an issue like homosexuality? Well, you, you mean when I would quit speaking about sin? Well, I guess some people would say there are different ways to talk about sin than particularly addressing one issue, and that's the issue that the media tends to keep picking up on. Well, I, 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 I speak on many issues. Um, I believe in the right to life. And I was recently in Washington, D.C., uh, where there was a march, about uh, 250,000 people uh, marching for the right to life, uh, protecting the unborn child. So, I, I mean, I speak out on a lot of issues. I believe abortion is murder. And there may be people listening right now that have had an abortion, and uh, I want them to know that God is willing to forgive them. And I'm not here to condemn them because they had an abortion. Uh, Jesus didn't come to condemn. He came to save. And I want people to know how they can be saved, how they can be forgiven, and, and have that hope in their heart, knowing that one day they're going to be in heaven for eternity. So I speak on many issues, and I think the media just has a tendency to pick up on one of those issues. This is a question from Barry from Luton. Um, he says, the tour is called the Graham Tour. Would you consider sending another member of the family to preach if these venues would have them? Well, we, we, we certainly um, uh, could possibly uh, do that, but that's not in the plans. And uh, we're going to continue with the plan that we have. Uh, the churches, I think, are, are more united. Uh, we have more churches that have signed on. Uh, there is an excitement. There's an expectation that God is getting ready to do something here in the UK. And so, again, um, we're, we're not backing up. We're not conceding. Uh, we're, we're moving forward in prayer, working with the churches, uh, and asking, uh, you know, getting their input, their wisdom, but we, we're moving forward. Let's talk about Blackpool. That was my first experience of a, of a mm -hmm. Graham event. Um, fascinating to see so many people engaging and, and so many people responding mm. uh, to the gospel. How do you reflect back on that event and what have you learned from Blackpool that might help with this tour? Oh, it was, um, it was exciting uh, to come to Blackpool, especially after very similar circumstances. We see today where there was a, a lot of opposition, but uh, when the um, people who protested came to the venue, I think the most we counted at any one time was 13 people uh, protesting. Uh, but they were protesting as hundreds of people were walking by to walk into the venue. I sent people out to personally invite the protesters to come in as of my guest. Um, I don't know if they did or not. I, I know we had uh, some Muslims that in, took the invitation, came in, and one particular imam came in and um, uh, his his comment was, uh, I like it. Uh, they sang hymns and songs about God. Uh, Mr. Graham, Reverend Graham, told them about God, and he said, I, I liked it very much. And that was the, the Muslim imam. Uh, there was, he said, and there was no hate speech. So uh, I think for Blackpool, uh, I learned that um, even though there's opposition, uh, that is not a bad thing. Uh, God can use opposition for us to uh, to be very careful in how we craft our speech, our message, but at the same time that we, we welcome those that are opposing us. We, we don't reject them, we, we welcome them 
and invite them to come in and be a part of it. You mentioned earlier the opposition that your father first had when he came uh, mm-hmm. to the country. Um, from what I'm told, that opposition kind of melted away over time. They, they listened to him speak and he became much loved in this country. Mm-hmm. Is it a sign of our society or is it a, a, a sign about um, your ministry that perhaps that the opposition has increased rather than melted away after Blackpool? Well, we'll we'll see, won't we? <laughs> when we finish uh, the the tour, again, um, I'm going to I'm going to preach about a relationship with God through faith in His Son Jesus Christ, and I'm not here to to condemn anyone, but to welcome everyone. So at the end of the tour, uh, we'll see. Um, we've kind of touched on this, but I would just want to uh, go back to it um, because we have a question from um, Amanda from Bishop Stortford, um, who says um, there's no confirmed venues at the moment, but we're told that the tour is going ahead. Um, how is that going to happen? Well, we're working uh, right as we're speaking. We have people out in these cities uh, meeting with various venues, uh, talking to them. So. Um, Give it a, a few more weeks, and we should have we should be in a, a position to name those venues. Lee from London wants to know: Are you going to take legal action or sue the arenas for discriminating against traditional Christian views? Well, there, no question. This is a religious f- uh, freedom issue, and it's also a free speech issue. And uh, it just doesn't affect me, but it's uh, there are churches that meet in public arenas. Uh, for Sunday services, uh, schools, and so forth. And if uh, a small group of people can force a cancellation of an event that's reaching um, where thousands of, of, of Christians are participating, I think that there is uh, no question of danger in the future to others. And so we, we certainly, um, we did have a contract uh, signed with these venues, and uh, they, they've breached the contract. I haven't broken any laws, and uh, I'm not uh, guilty of anything. So uh, I think we just have to look at uh, what our options are and realizing that even though we can assign other venues, which we will do, um, I'm thinking of the the church in the future. Um, We need to do something to try to protect them. And this is something that even your critics, I think, are getting behind you on because, um, you know, in recent years, we've had the case of Tim Farron, the Christian politician here in the UK who had to stand down as a political party leader on this uh, same issue. We've got the rugby player, Israel Folau. I don't know if you've come across that case, but the Australian who's recently joined um, a team in Europe who's been told that you can no longer talk about your faith. Um, if you want to continue, and there are clubs who are trying to stop him playing because of his uh, views about uh, sexuality. Um, how concerned are you, and um, um, are we at a pivotal moment when it comes to freedom of speech that Christians need to push back on? I think we are at a pivotal moment as it comes to free speech. And uh, free speech, remember, uh, is for all of us. And if we don't protect that, if we lose that, um, it, it's one of our most cherished freedoms. And so I would uh, certainly encourage people to push back and to guard and protect uh, your right to free speech. And then also for our religious beliefs. Uh, I've, I hold firm to my religious beliefs. And to be discriminated against because of those religious beliefs, uh, we, we need to uh, be very careful and uh, protect what we can. Seems like we've become a more intolerant people, not just in the UK, it seems around the world. We've had Brexit recently, where it's been a case of, if you don't agree with me, you become my en- enemy. You've mm-hmm. got the same situation with your president. If you are a supporter of uh, Donald Trump, you must be foolish. Um, how do we move away from a society which is so polarized? <laughs> That's a good question. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think um, the only way that we as a society uh, can change uh, is when we come into a right relationship with God. And what we see in society is just uh, people without God uh, searching, uh, who are angry, who are mad, who who strike out at uh, this person or that person or this thing or that thing. 
And uh, we are uh, a society that has taken God out of uh, pretty much everything. And when I say we, I'm talking about a Western society. I'm not talking necessarily just the UK, but it's we've taken God out of schools. We've taken him out of the textbooks. We've taken God uh, out of the public debate, out of the public square, out of politics. And if you think about uh, 100 years ago, the political leaders uh, in many countries were the pastors. They were the in the local community. Uh, the church had a very strong voice, and the, the pastor or the bishops uh, had uh, tremendous influence over their congregants. And uh, we see today, or if you take a hundred years ago, if a if a house burned in a community, well, it was the churches that helped the family, took them in, gave them a place uh, to live, and uh, helped them rebuild their home or whatever. Uh, we've we've allowed the the government to take all of these kinds of responsibilities today with various social programs, and there's no mention of God, nothing nothing to do with God. People run away from His name. And I think that's just the, the world in which we're living today. It's uh, through secularization. Uh, you know, under communism, for, and of course, as a young boy growing up, we were afraid of the red threat uh, that the communists would take the world. Well, when the Berlin Wall came down and communism in Eastern Europe disappeared and many people had a sigh of relief uh, that uh, the red threat was gone, but what happened was uh, socialism, uh, secularism, slowly began to creep into to Western uh, democracies, uh, and it got into our schools, our churches. And secularism and communism are, are not much different. They're both godless forms of government. And that's what we're seeing take place right now in, in so many of our uh, especially in my country. I can't speak too much for the UK, but I know in my country this is a great problem. Let's finish by talking about the tour. Um, what impacts do you hope that this tour is going to have on the church in the UK? I hope that this tour will ignite a fire in the churches across the UK to evangelize. Uh, I believe we're coming down to... Uh, I don't know what God's clock is, but I believe we're in that midnight hour on God's time. And let's get about telling men and women about how they can be saved. Let's don't be afraid of the gospel. Let's don't be afraid to be a Christian. Let's don't be afraid to be different. Let's don't, the, the, the culture wants us all to kind of melt and be the same. We're not. We hold to a higher standard. We hold to God's standards, not men's standards, but God's standards. And, and God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be pure. And uh, let's stand on his standards, and let's don't be afraid or ashamed, but let's preach the gospel from one end of this nation to the uh, others, from the north to the south, to the east to the west, that Jesus Christ is Lord. He's the King of kings, and he's coming back soon. Just finally, how can we be praying for you? Obviously, you've got a whole team that is working on this, but you know it does fall on, on your shoulders. It's, it's your tour. You're the one who's being criticized left, right, and center. It must have a, an impact on you. How can we be praying for you? Well, uh, pray, pray for the country, that uh, people would come to the tour, bring their unsaved friends, their family members, and, uh, and, and, and pray that they will hear and understand that uh, God loves them and that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And uh, so pray, that would be my prayer for this country, that the unsaved would come and that the churches would back it with prayer. Uh, we're not taking up offerings. We're not asking for money. We're not uh, uh, selling tickets or anything like this. It's free. And uh, everyone who comes is welcome. Thanks so much for joining us for this special edition of the Profile Podcast. Franklin Graham is a previous guest on this show, and if you scroll back through your podcast browser, you will find many episodes ago now a full-length conversation with Franklin Graham. You'll also find, of course, interviews with leading politicians, sports stars, those in the media, and those in church leadership. Scroll back through the Profile Podcast to find more great interviews just like this one. We'll be back to our regular format very shortly. So we'll see you again right here on the Profile Podcast very soon. For now, thanks so much for listening.